Hi everyone, hope you're all doing great. I'm here to give you a bit of blouse inspo. As you all may remember, the So April Blouse 22 Challenge is still running. This is the very last week. If you are interested and you haven't entered yet, head on over to Instagram, use that hashtag and tag myself, Dali Society and Gabriella Cloth Edit to be in the running for some incredible prizes. including first prize, which is a $150 voucher to the Cloth Edit store, as well as some amazing indie patterns. And we've got up to five prizes, all with some fantastic indie pattern sponsors there. So if you haven't checked out what is in the prize drawer, head over to Instagram and you'll find that as well. So the 30th of April, the last day, then after the 30th, Gabrielle and I are going to have the daunting task of judging some of these most amazing, creative, really inspiring blouses every day i get more and more tags to look at and i just think wow uh how on earth are we going to choose a winner so i'm so glad there's five prizes because there's no way you could just pick one um, i'm loving some of the details everyone's using there are so many incredible talented sewists out there and we're not looking for perfection in sewing especially with techniques we are looking purely for some ultra inspiring creative pieces of wearable art it can be anything you feel like sewing as long as it's a blouse woven fabric indie pattern big four pattern vintage whatever even self-drafted a lot of people have made their own patterns so really it's all up to you so head on over to instagram to follow along with the so april blouse challenge so for a bit of inspo today i actually have a rack full of all of my blouses this is my entire blouse collection in my wardrobe it's probably one of the most worn garments i wear i wear them all the time throughout the whole year i layer them i wear them for winter for summer for all seasons and i love wearing a pair of blue jeans i am just such a comfy jeans girl i have got a few favorite pairs i love them with a little bit of stretch and yes i have made jeans in the past I haven't can't say i've really enjoyed making them i found it to be quite maybe it's one of those tasks that once you get into the method of it and into the flow it can be quite a rewarding kind of thing but getting the fit right is one thing and then getting the most comfortable denim that's the hardest bit for me is finding the most soft comfortable denim because i love a little bit of stretch in mine so you get those favorite pairs that you may have worn for a few years they just feel so comfy on so i would prefer spending my time um, sewing up tops to go with the jeans that I buy but that's just purely my own opinion I know a lot of you love sewing your own jeans and a lot of people have said once you've sewn your own you'll never go you'll never go and buy them but yeah it's interesting I'd love to hear do you guys sew your own jeans and have you found it um there is a quite a bit involved as far as um, getting hardware and using different tools and things but um, it's one of those things I think that once you master the art of jean making I would say there'd be nothing like making your own tailored pair but yeah I prefer to make the colorful bits that go on top and that is the blouses so with all those plans i had for april blouse i've actually made two blouses and i've got one more on the go that i'm going to be able to show you my grand reveal at the end of the week as well as i will be showing you the winners of the so april blouse challenge and all of the competitors anyone that's put a pic of themselves on instagram you're going to be shown here on youtube for the whole world to see i just love showing off all these fantastic talented people and what they've made i think it's very very inspiring and another thing before I get started too, I've had such a huge weekend. My new website has opened and that has got a uh, fabric shop online there. And for the next couple of weeks, just temporarily, I have got a D stash account on there. If you're wanting a great bargain, there are lots of remnants, designer end pieces uh, going out at great prices. There's been a couple of name brand things in there. I had a Lady McElroy piece that got snapped up. There's an art gallery piece 
they are going really fast but a lot of these remnants I should say usually is a smaller cut some of the remnants I've got up to three meters so it's actually quite a large piece you can nab for yourself at a great price and if you're wanting these sent overseas you must remember to let me know and I can work out a quote for you because it's all based on weight normally with um, things getting sent overseas with boxes they're pre-weighed we can organize that but with the fabrics uh, of course they can add up and once you start getting over the one to two kilo parcels they can get very very hefty and very expensive to send especially to the US and the UK from Australia so you must let me know and I can work out a quote but a lot of these have been getting snapped up really fast actually before I even advertised uh, on my community tab over on YouTube a lot of you got to see that and over on Instagram I actually advertised the shop there so within an hour or so a lot of the d-stash had gone before I even got to list the following item so there's quite a few bits still on there and it will be a temporary thing uh, before I start getting in my newer fabrics which is very exciting and don't forget the next box drop for the uh, bespoke secret sewing box will be on the 8th of May 7 p.m here Australian Eastern Standard Time and a lot of people are starting to receive their boxes and I've had some beautiful comments and messages from people a lot of you have watched the secret video that was in the box as well and been very happy with the pattern discount and the fabric so if you're one of those people and you've loved your box I would love you to share it on Instagram uh, use the hashtag bespoke sewing box uh, so everyone can see what's in it because there will be a uh, a vlog out next week I think it's the 4th of May I've got it set for by that stage most of you would have all received your boxes and I think the New Zealand ladies should have by then as well and I'm going to be able to show you guys exactly what was inside and do a bit of an unboxing which I love personally love watching that uh, on YouTube so without further ado I'm going to get stuck into my favorite blouse patterns a lot of these were made in the last year or two now I've got one on that I made last year for the so shirty challenge and this was the Irma from I am patterns I made it in a lovely floaty um, crane print pattern matching is not quite there but you know I didn't actually intend on matching I'm, I'm terrible I'm one of those people that uh, I look later I think I should have put more thought into matching that pattern and I didn't sometimes it's just a fluke that it happens but um, I really like the sleeve I did a bit of a hack on the sleeve and made it like a long kind of floaty puff with the elastic uh, thick cuff around the bottom um, but yeah it's a really nice floaty blouse to wear with a pair of jeans and a little pair of converse trainers just for running around and doing things like packing up parcels and sending them to the post office I've been doing a lot of that with the uh, D stash oh my goodness I have got so much respect for people that run shops uh, whether it be online or brick and mortar uh, you people are the busiest people ever and I can see why uh, it becomes really can take over your life a lot of it I'm making sure that I don't forget about my YouTube channel I know you guys love to have the episodes out at least once to twice a week to inspire you so do not fear I will not be leaving YouTube by any means I'm going to be incorporating the shop uh, some of the fabrics I'll be getting in I'll be making things with to show you how, what I've done um, give you a bit of inspo that way so eventually a lot of the fabrics you see they're listed will have pics of me and maybe patterns to match up as well so it's all about getting enough time to do everything I want to do as well as the uh, bespoke sewing boxes so lots going on and if you can hear the pitter patter of feet out there Meg is uh, chasing some birds she's just had a bath today and I'm sure she'll be needing another one very shortly okay let's get cracking on these blouses my favorite ones so far a lot of these are made for the uh so april blouse challenge last year in particular a favorite pattern of mine is this gorgeous blouse fight by the sewing revival and it's the heron blouse this i made in beautiful japanese cotton which was just a stunning print this is from gabrielle's shop cloth edit um i love the heron I've made a couple of these I love the detail and the fact that you can do so many hacks on the one blouse you can do the closed up neck so just the round neck with the elastic casing or you can have it split down the middle you can have the tie there I've actually sewn through my ties so they don't move um, you can either have this cuff with the elastic or you can have the fluted gathered hem on the bottom the other one I made was the chiffon fabric which was like a waterfall chiffon uh, that was the closed neck version and I made it uh, like, kind of looks like a smocky version but so they're my two herons and that's definitely a pattern I can highly recommend I do know that Janine from the sewing revival has released a brand new uh, 
top. I'll put a pic of it here so you can see. It's got unfinished edges on this top and it's a real gorgeous detail. Maybe you could use a cotton or a linen to give it that frayed effect, but what a pretty blouse. Definitely one to think about sewing up. Um, I do love Janine's um, sewing revivals pattern, so I've got a couple for her herons. I've also got another blouse that I made from her um, pattern collection, which is called the Fantail. You may remember that one last year as well. It's a beautiful fabric. I think I got that from Wattle Hill. Um, I love the colours. Don't you love the cobalt rich blues with the brown, the russ? This has got a high low. You'll see that it's got the, the higher front with a little bit of elastic across the front and the lower sort of a you can see it why it's called the fantail at the back. Um, that's a really, really pretty top. I think next time I was going to size up to a 16, I made a 14 in that. And I think a 16 might have been just that little bit extra more generous for me, the way I like to wear it just over the tummy. Um, but that's another really nice pattern from the Sewing Revival. So some great patterns there. Love Aunt Janine's patterns. Don't forget, I've also got affiliate links uh, on the Sewing Revival's patterns if you're interested and you'd like to buy through that link, it does give the channel a very small commission uh, that can help me bring you extra episodes. But yeah, great pattern. Another favourite of mine, I actually made this blouse when I started YouTube, probably a month or two later. It's a Starlight pattern. It's called the Jules Woven Top. And it's got quite a nice chunky wooden button on there. I love the way the um, bottom piece is attached with that kind of curved up uh, section there it really sits lovely and floaty on it's just got a, a basic kind of straight sleeve a nice deep v front that just crosses over a little bit but there is just something about the way this pattern fits i feel fantastic in it and i've even seen people hack it into a dress that would be really easy to do just lengthening the hem how easy would that be um, but the jewels is one that i definitely wear again and again i love it with a pair of jeans as well um, this was just a rayon that I got from Spotlight, yeah, probably about three years ago now, but I really love the colours, of course, the back, um, the background being black and the bright floral, but it's really nice to have to use, um, a feature button. I think these buttons were from Arrow Mountain, which is an indie independent button maker, and she has some beautiful, uh, really cute feature buttons, especially the wooden ones on her website. So that is the Jules Woven Blouse. The next one is another one from the Sewing Revival. Gee, I tell you, Janine's got some great patterns. This is the Nikau dress, and I actually made it into a top, so I just cut off the dress length, shorter. I used this beautiful Lady McElroy, I think it's called Culture in Style. It's got ladies all over it. Such a pretty cotton lawn, that. It's got that real crisp, um, lovely cotton feel and really breathable. Nice, dramatic, big puff sleeve, and yeah, cut off the bottom a bit shorter. Um, but that one doesn't have a tie. You'll just see it sits apart a bit further. But really like how that looks on. It's a real great one for a feature puffed um, sleeve. So think about using something with a bit more structure like a cotton lawn or a cotton linen to give it that bit more of an oomph and the sleeve will really stand out. Uh, I actually ended up putting elastic around the bottoms of my sleeve. So that's an easy hack you can do. And the nice little pleat at the back, of course, gives you that bit of ease and movement through the body but the Nikau is a great pattern as well. Uh, this is another one made with the So Shirty um, hashtag last year and it's the Lucien by I Am Patterns. If you're wanting to make a, bl a blouse or shirt with a placket front and a collar it hasn't got a collar stand so it's kind of a cheats version of um, making a proper shirt but so easy to make and it does sit really lovely. That is probably one of the only shirts I can button up to the neck and feel comfortable with it done fully up. Whereas when I have a collar and collar stand, I feel a little bit claustrophobic. So I prefer ones without collar stands to wear buttoned right up. And that one was made from a beautiful, um, another viscose lawn from uh, Weft and Warp in Canberra. Gorgeous uh, ladies. I just love that print. It's just so nice being able to go to the wardrobe and wear a pair of jeans and throw on a nice blouse. And you can really dress it up or down depending on your footwear, um, things like jackets and coats as well. Um, you can even think about opening it up and tying it with a little tank top underneath. And it's got a nice little tortoise shell button on that one. So that's another favourite pattern of mine. This one, the name has escaped me. It's a named pattern. Oh, gosh, I'm starting to really worry about the amount of things I'm forgetting lately. Um, but anyway, I'll put a pick up so you can see. Uh, it's got a fantastic big uh, billowy bishop kind of sleeve with a very deep cuff. 
And that's one that I think you can wear back to front as well. I've seen it in the um, on the pics on the website. Of course, name patterns are fantastic. I love that reader shirt dress I made with one of my favorite patterns last year. And this blouse is also a fantastic style. You can wear it tied up at the front or just long and loose as well. So that was another Lady McElroy fabric. I think it was another viscose lawn. I love a viscose lawn. You get the best of both worlds because you get that kind of soft drapiness, but with that cottony kind of finish to it, so not too slippery. Um, it's just so lovely to wear on the body as well. So it's a really nice colored print that now one. I do but find that I can get a little bit annoyed with a long deep cuff because I have got shorter arms uh, and now if I need to um, turn them up it kind of ruins the effect of that deep cuff so I do tend to prefer an elastic casing at the bottom of my sleeve um, but I love um, you know if you've got nice long arms it definitely um, will set it off beautifully so that's a really pretty one uh, last year I also made the Ashton blouse from Helen's Closet. That was with the hack, with the sleeve hack. Uh, you can also put pockets on the front. There's about three or four different sleeves with that add-on hack pack for the Ashton. So normally the Ashton's just a sleeveless top, like a boxy top. I made it in this beautiful linen print from Cloth Edit as well. Have a look at the colours in that. It is like a boho dreams. It is just so beautiful. The greens and reds and that kind of patchworky boho style is just right up my alley. And I really love wearing that with maybe a kind of a baggy, a high waist pair of jeans. And it's great for all year round. It's got a really nice uh, practical sleeve length as well. But very simple top. Uh, one that's great for showing or showcasing a really pretty fabric if you don't. Uh, you know, if you want to make the fabric do all the talking, you want a simple top pattern, the Ashton is great for that. This pattern is a Liesl & Co pattern. I forgot the name of it again. It is one I made with some beautiful gingham fabric from Gabrielle last year. That was for the so April Blouse Challenge. It's been well loved and well worn. It's very, really, very really soft, pretty, uh, like a duck egg blue check print but it's a really good tunic pattern um oh gee i can't remember the name of it either it'll come back to me it's a long line tunic so it's a fantastic um length to wear if you've got like a legging or a ponty pan or a skinny jean and you want something a bit more um that kind of boxy tunic style and the side splits are really nicely done on that pattern as well one that i made last year was a hack on a dress that was a marsha style dress the Leela dress I made in a beautiful lilac colour print. It was very swishy and long, so a real maxi length dress with lots of tears. I actually made the top version in this beautiful fabric, which, which is from Fabric Hunt, and it is another Lady McElroy viscose lawn again. But look at the beautiful retro print and look at that sleeve. It just goes to show you, you can do a lot with dress patterns by shortening the length. You don't need to have separate patterns. Sometimes you can do a bit of hacking yourself. Um, I love that over a pair of jeans. I especially love how it's longer at the back and shorter at the, at the front. And it does have the, the ties that let you uh, give yourself a bit more waist definition as well. But that sleeve is so 70s, that retro look. I love that. And it's got a nice deep V with a bit of a rounded edge finish on it. But it's quite a simple pattern to make and definitely a great maxi dress if you're wanting a real dramatic maxi with all the frills and it is constructed differently Why you do the tiers you do the whole front section and the whole back section separately so they're like half tiers and the backs are half tiers and then you sew the sides up so I actually really like doing gathering that way I find it um, much less time consuming than doing the whole gather at once and it gets a more of an even distribution of gathers as well I think so I just think it's great. A lot of these indie pattern designers, um, they may, may do things a little bit, a little bit differently to each other, but you can really pick up lots of hints and tips from each designer and take those hints with you. It def definitely lets you um, make things the way that you want to make them. So you can reinvent the wheel. I know a lot of people say we should be taught to sew how we were taught years ago in high school. And if that was the case, I would never have kept up with sewing. I would have given it away years ago because I didn't have much fun following all of those big four patterns many years ago when I was a teenager. I found them very, very confusing. And if it wasn't for my mum giving me a bit of a hand there, I probably would have um, chucked it in years ago. But uh, finding any patterns was one of the best things that happened to me as far as uh, reinvigorating my love of sewing and making my own clothing, not just because of the instructions and the great way patterns are um, set out, easy to follow, but the fit and the shape, I just think they fit me so much better than what a big four pattern 
would ever do. Um, but in saying that, I still love a big four pattern. I can tweak things now. I have a bit more confidence in you know hacking and tweaking things. But I wouldn't have had that years ago with if I had just stuck with big four patterns. So that's why I yeah I'll credit um, indie patterns for giving me my love of sewing back and creating my own clothing. So I'd love to hear what you guys think. Have you got the same thoughts as me? Uh, do you find that you think indie patterns are easier to follow or the fits better? Or are you just a big four lover from way back and you you know feel very true and loyal to those patterns, which a lot of people do because they've grown up um, sewing them their whole lives. So it's really interesting. There's always a big debate, but there's plenty of room for both, I always say. A couple of weeks ago, the uh, frugal, so frugal challenge, of course, with Ruan and Sam. I made the Paddington blouse in this beautiful Lady McElroy scene print. It is just divine uh really uh someone was saying uh, those old worldy vibes like monet's garden i actually felt it was uh giving me the bridgerton vibe so i must um, go and finish off watching season two uh yeah i love the sleeve it's a fantastic free pattern from peppermint magazine definitely think about making it um i took the button panel out the back i didn't want a placket with buttons just because i feel a bit uncomfortable leaning back against buttons sometimes um i really prefer it without but I love the raglan sleeve and I love that big dramatic puff sleeve as well. So it's a fantastic freebie. Another shirt here I've got that I made for the So Shirty Challenge in a lovely cotton silk is the Martha shirt from uh, Style Like Patterns. Of course, again, they've got great patterns. Uh, they've got such a vast catalogue of styles too. So you really can browse there for hours. Uh, I love the fit of it. Another shirt with no collar stand. So very simple, sits really nicely on my neck. And I love the kind of um, paneling through the shoulder there and also that trapeze style that uh, it's just such a lovely blouse. If you haven't made anything with cotton silk blend, it's a great way to start off sewing in with the silks because they can be a little bit fiddly, but they are so beautiful against the skin to wear. And the cotton gives it that little bit of stability that you may need. But yeah, a really pretty blouse pattern. Now, if you're after a little croppy style shirt with a tie front, the Gilbert from Helen's Closet is such a lovely little retro style blouse that can be made in a long kind of bell sleeve as well. Um, it's got a beautiful... Um, burrito method that she uses is really easily explained so if you're ever in doubt with that definitely helen's closet patterns will help you there but i've done a bit of a different color on the inside of the yoke there and it really sets it off nicely but this is also another lady mcelroy lawn more of a crisp lawn um but this the vintage 70s ladies i think it is i just love that print it's one of my favorite blouses to wear and I love either wearing it with um, a high-waisted pair of jeans or even a long maxi skirt. I've worn it with like a long denim skirt as well for summer. But it's a great little shirt. Um, as I say, you can do a couple of different versions there and I love the little tie front. It's very cute and unique. This one needs a bit of an iron and it's also another Lady McElroy. Um, it's like a bug print. This was the Friday Pattern Company's square neck top. You can make this top uh, as a blouse in a woven or in a knit. I haven't made the knit version. It's quite a kind of boxy. Um, it's not overly long. It's just a really basic little boxy style blouse. But again, great for showcasing a nice uh, fancy print uh, if you want to let the print do all the talking. Uh, and yeah, as I say, it needs a really good press. It doesn't look great here, but I'll put some pics up so you can see. But it's a really easy top to make. And Friday Pattern Company patterns are always uh, great. The instructions are always really good too. So a nice, simple little boxy top. This has to be one of my favourite things. I think I showed it last year as one of my top makes of 2021. It's the Varley Top by Patterns Fantastic. And, I, and I've got to say that the fabric probably is the standout. I love the 70s smock style and it reminds me of something I would have seen my mum or my aunties in back um, one of them probably would have been pregnant and I remember that smock style everyone had them on and they had the big bow at the neck this is a lot more refined than that but I just love that 70s vintage style the nice drapey sleeve I love the way it's constructed it's a little bit more unique the way the patterns fantastic has got kind of different instructions um, but things always come together really nicely and they've got a great shape um, but the fabric in this was just a beautiful viscose I got from um, Gabrielle shop at Cloth Edit as well. But the colours in that is just so pretty. If you're like me and you have those favourite patterns that you keep going back to and thinking, I need to make another one of them, this is definitely the one. I actually wouldn't mind making it in a long, bit longer sleeve for winter. 
maybe that might might be the thing to do. Uh, make the smock style again with a long sleeve because I think I'd definitely get the wear out of that uh, for winter. And you can also make the dress version as well, which would be great for wearing with tights and like a polo neck jumper underneath for layering. Um, but I love the Vali. I think it's uh, one of the best patterns that's come out of last year, in my opinion. As well as that, the ever famous um, sage brush blouse, which we've seen so many of them. Uh, a lot of people have made this pattern for the Sarah April blouse challenge. And you can see why, because it's a simple pattern, but it looks fantastic on. It's got the nice tight back. Nice puff sleeve, that lovely little frill at the front there. Actually, my mum's made two or three of this pattern. Um, this is another one that needs ironing as well because it's been well worn. Uh, that is a, I think it's an art gallery or it could be a Lady McElroy Visco Salon and it's got the wolf, beautiful uh, Arctic wolf print in it. But it's very unique, that pattern, um, the print. It's really lovely. But that would definitely be a great dress. I've always said I wanted to make another sagebrush in a dress version. Never got around to it yet, but I really enjoy making it. Of course, Friday Pattern Company patterns are always great ones to make. This is a firm favourite from oh, three years ago now. It is the Chalk and Notch Fringe Dress. There's two versions in the fringe, and I know Andrea from Beyond the Pink Door loves this pattern. She's made quite a few herself. This is the one with the keyhole front. You've got the crossover button front or the keyhole, and it's the smock or the tunic version. Um, it's a fantastic pattern for layering for a long sleeve underneath as well or for making into a dress but I really love this um, this art gallery I think it's called meadow this fabric and it's definitely one I'll pull out time and time again to, to wear because of the beautiful print but just the wearability of that tunicky smocky style blouse is something I just really love to wear in a wardrobe this one I haven't worn a great deal I don't know why because I really like the fabric it's an Italia brunette fabric i think i got that from seamstress fabrics and it's a really pretty print in that you can see it's quite sheer that could be one of the reasons i haven't worn it a great deal but i really love it it's just simple with that elastic binding neck uh, elastic cuff there but it's the ray top from tazuti patterns and they've also got the ray dress you can make it in that sleeve or in sleeveless as well but yeah it's a really pretty fabric and i need to wear it more um, maybe for nice, not autumnal looking, I think maybe with a mustard color cardigan could be. So to grow Sydney shirt or shirt dress, and I've done it as the shirt, another vintage Lady McElroy. Oh, I'm a big fan of Lady McElroy. I've got to say, I, uh, yeah, I do have quite a few of my favorite things. <laughs> you see many years ago, I would have had lots of things, maybe more things in cheaper fabric. And now I'll do, um, I'll go more for the quality over the quantity, even though it looks like there's a lot of things here. It is for the channel. Uh, now I'll do quality over quantity. If I really love a pattern, I will make sure that I make it in one of my favorite fabrics to set that pattern off. But I have to be sure about the pattern before I go uh, using the nice fabric because yeah, it's too expensive to waste. Um, but that is a fantastic shirt. Um, the way it's constructed, it's very easy to make. Um, and it's got that cam style collar. So um, a great little pattern, either shirt or shirt dress and a nice cuff detail as well. We're getting near the end. There's another chalk a notch pattern I put up here so you can see. It's a great little blouse. It also can be in a long sleeve and in a dress, uh, kind of like a midi or like a mini dress with a little frill around the bottom. Um, that's just the regular blouse style with the uh, elbow length sleeve. I've used a cute little crystal flower button. It's also from a Japanese cotton from Cloth Edit. Um, really lovely cotton fabric. So nice to wear on the body. Um, but that's another great little scoop neck pattern. Um, very simple, but it's one of those ones that it's like a classic style blouse, I think, that can stay in the wardrobe. You can actually put um, dart or fisheye darts in the back to give it more shaping. Um, I maybe I might do that again next time if I make it again. Um, but that one hasn't got much shaping, but I really think it probably does need a little bit of shaping in it, I, I would think. Um, but I still like having those sort of boxy style blouses to wear. Nearly there. This is another Ashton top, which I've talked about before. It was the same as the uh, linen, that one there. This is the short sleeve version in the tulip style sleeve with that's the Ashton hack. Um, so yeah, it's a great little pattern. That one's made with a bias binding neckline. You can always use a, a facing or a bias binding. It's totally up to you. 
but it's a nice, simple little uh, blouse. Needs a good eye on that one. Um, but you can see the actual fabric here. It's just gorgeous, beautiful vintage Lady, Mac Lady McElroy um, print. Um, yeah, is it the Cobra Cassage? I'm not sure if it's the same one. It could be. There's quite a few different colorways in that now, but uh, very, very pretty little blouse. Definitely, I'll be keeping that for many years to come. And one of my later style blouses I am absolutely in love with, and I want to make another one of these. It's the Hortense blouse by Fiber Mood. Now, Fiber Mood patterns, I am in the middle of making one of their new patterns that was released in the latest issue of Fiber Mood, which was last week. I still haven't got around to making it, but it's in the middle of put the pattern together. Um, so it's a matter of just getting the fabric cut out and sewn up. Um, but I really love the Hortons. I wasn't too sure about that kind of high and neck kind of gothic-y style, but I really love it actually. Now you notice on my website, it is one of the ones I've got in the pick on there. Um, so it just goes to show you, you can never really know until you try something on yourself and see if it actually suits you or not. It's good to get out of your comfort zone, especially with sewing sometimes. And the sharing was actually quite simple to do. They give you really good instructions there. Um, it's like a Lurexy crepey rayon black. And it makes me realize that I do need more black in the wardrobe. Um, Melbournians are well known for loving black. And you can see there is no black there. I actually love my brights and prints, but I really love wearing black. And when I do, I wish I'd make more things in black. So maybe it black simple dress um, I've made for summer I've worn it heaps so maybe I need to make some more black simple things as well but yeah it just goes to show you can never really know your style till you make something yourself and give it a bit of a try but love the the sharing around the wrists as well um, it's just such a pretty pattern it also comes in a dress a dress version too oh before I go I need to show you something else I'm back remember a couple of months ago I made that Gladys blouse from Fiber Mood that I just couldn't try and love. I tried to and it wasn't me. A lot of you loved it. A lot of you didn't. said it just didn't suit. Well, I actually got to hacking it. I took off the frills around the shoulder that were sort of poking out. I, I think the broderie on clay fabric was beautiful, but maybe not the right fabric for that pattern. Needed maybe something softer, but I've kept that little frill on the front. I've taken it off around the shoulder and around the back, left the ones on the front, and I actually cropped it a bit more. So the length's great for a pair of high-waisted jeans. Left the sleeves as it is, but I think it's actually quite wearable on me now. I think it's a bit more simple. Um, and I've seen so many beautiful Gladyses with a more of a soft rayon, and I really think that would have been a better choice. But it just goes to show, instead of just tossing things away, or, you know, donating them to an op shop, um, you can actually repurpose things sometimes. You can make things work for you so it didn't look like your style. Maybe think about changing something on it. Um, I love the button, so I'm really glad it came up more of a wearable blouse. Just for that little simple frill. I actually took off the other layer of the frill that was jutting out and just left one layer and pressed it really nicely. And I think it's actually turned out a lot better than what it was before. It was just a little bit cottage core, a bit too dolly for me. And I, yeah, I just can't wear that kind of thing. I just think it's just, it uh, looks great on a lot of people. But yeah, it wasn't for me, but glad I could save it. So that is my blouse collection. I have got a couple more coming and I really can't wait to show you all of the entrants. If you haven't been watching over on Instagram, look up the hashtag, so April blouse 22 You'll see all of the entries. If you look on that hashtag, there's so many of them. Um, it's going to be a really hard task for us, but it just goes to show that it is a perfect thing to do for entering back into your sewing. If you've lost your sew, Joe, a blouse is a great thing to make because it doesn't take a lot of fabric or a lot of time. Um, you can put a lot of time into it, but you can also make one up very quickly uh, and it can be worn lots, dressed up or dressed down. Um, I just think it's a lovely time of year when it's transitioning into seasons. A blouse is a perfect thing to make. So head on over to Instagram and be a part of watching what happens there because we do put out stories. Um, most nights, Gabriella or I will put out um, a running um, entry. We'll see all the entrants that have put their, their blouses on the internet that day so you can actually see what's happening. Uh, also, don't forget about the D-Stash over on my website that's happening. And yeah, don't forget the box release will be happening on the 8th of May. I do have a vlog coming out next week showing you what was in April's box if you're interested in that too. Take care. Happy sewing. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, make sure you do that because that way you'll get to see when I do make announcements and you could be VIP first in line to be getting on and finding some bargains on my website. 
uh, and also keeps you up to date with what's happening with the channel that way too. Take care, happy sewing, we'll see you soon. Bye for now. Thank you.